Welcome back. Uh, this is another Digital Ventures Let's Build. Uh, first, I just want to say thanks for all the kind comments, the likes, and the subscribes from everyone. Really been appreciating that. Um, as this is about like the 15th or so video, so I really appreciate all the support. Today, we will be creating a Minecraft-based game featuring the Creeper. So in this game, we're going to be dodging creepers jumping away from them, um, and you'll be learning how to program a creeper in Scratch. First, let's uh, talk about the sprites we need. I have three right now. One is my Steve sprite. I'm using this from a previous project. I have a creeper sprite, which is about the same size as Steve. And then lastly, I have um, just a block, a floor that I drew uh, based off just squares. <laughs> and uh, it, I just make sure that I have a black top on there. So we're going to use the color black as something that we can jump on um, in the coat so that you can add on more platforms if you wanted to. Okay, let's start with uh, just getting some basic controls for Steve. Uh, we're going to move left and right and we're going to jump. And we're going to have some uh, pretty basic physics, basic gravity. So for this to work, we will need a couple variables. Uh, you know what, maybe just one variable for Steve right now. We're gonna call this one Y speed. It's the speed in which uh, this character Steve will move up and down. Uh, when green flag clicked, of course, I'm gonna zoom in. So this is him within the Steve sprite. When green flag clicked, um, of course he needs to show up. Show up Mr. Steve, then let's set the Y speed to zero. It's always good to set our variables. And we're gonna make Steve start in the middle of the game somewhere. So zero, and then I think about 50 would be this area. So uh, we'll do, well actually no, that's about minus 50. Uh, that's kind of high, we'll do minus 100. That's your starting spot. Good, yeah, perfect. Um, now that's the setup. Steve is now set up to go. Uh, now he needs his loop, his forever loop, so that he can uh, move around forever. Um, let's start with gravity. I'm gonna say uh, forever, and we will need an if else statement. We're gonna say if we're touching color black, you're on the ground, set your Y speed to zero. Otherwise, uh, you're gonna move downward. So we're gonna use touching color, and I'm gonna make sure I pick the exact correct color here. This can get tricky. You may wanna, you know, make that screen bigger. I think that's, nope, see it's not even perfectly black. So I gotta go, it, I don't think it matters these two, but as long as your brightness is at zero, it'll be black. Okay, uh, like I said, if we're on a black object, we will set the Y speed to zero. And then uh, what you're also going to be allowed to do when you're touching this color is being allowed to jump. When you're in the air, I'm not gonna let you jump, but if you are touching the ground or a platform, we will allow jumping. So I need to put in my jumping script, so if, blank then, if key W. I'm gonna use W for jumping, you can use space or up arrow. Um, I'm gonna use WASD for this project for my movement controls. W up and set my Y speed to, I think 15 is good. A higher number would make you jump higher. A uh, lower number is a lower jump. So 15 is pretty good. I think that jumps them over the creeper when I'm all done with this. Now, if I'm not touching the ground, I would like to uh, increase my Y speed downward, or I guess it's not really decreasing Y speed, but I want to uh, pull my character down. So I'm gonna just, just change the Y speed by minus one here. Be careful with the sets and the changes. They get interchanged quite a bit. Okay, so nothing's gonna happen. If I look at this, it's just gonna count downward because I'm not touching a black platform. Uh, we're going to apply 
this y speed to our actual uh, movement by saying change y speed or sorry change y by y speed and that should pull us down and gravity has been made I can pull him up <laughs> he like teleports down but uh, it'll it'll work <laughs> when we actually do jump oh actually I can jump I added that in there we go W will make me jump excellent I just need to do left and right movement next which you sh may have done before so it's two if statements stacked and we're gonna say if uh, key something pressed now we're gonna do left first left is gonna be uh, a and to the right will be D you can use right arrow or left arrow if you'd like uh, sometimes that's easier and then this is pretty straightforward we're just gonna change X uh, when we go left uh, by minus 10 and I'm gonna duplicate that and if we press D we move 10 uh, and there we go that's real basic we got basic basic movement and jumping now we're gonna get on to the uh, more interesting code which is I think at least which is the creeper so inside of the creeper um, we're gonna do a little bit of setup there's gonna be clones of this creeper so I like to hide the original and and then um, one thing I guess I forgot to mention is the creeper we should have two costumes one is the normal creeper and then another one is an explosion costume so this is what happens when the creeper does its explosion when it gets near you um, so I have two of these and I've named them costume one and explosion so that uh, you'll know when we get there uh, the creeper is going to have color effects um, used on it and so what you can do is clear graphic effects right away in case some of those effects uh, carry over we can just clear them um, and that's just an easy way to um, make sure that you don't get any weird glitches with your uh, clones okay uh, next I'm gonna do a rotation style left right I can never find this one I'm pretty sure it's in motion set rotation style to left right this will make sure if we're moving left or right with the creeper um, it won't flip him so he doesn't flip upside down he'll just look left or right okay next a forever loop um, so that's that's it for the setup now what we're gonna do is create all the clones forever wait one second and we are going to create a clone of myself so it'll create one clone of this creeper every one second now what happens when this creeper um, is created that is the next step of the project we're gonna use a when I start as clone so it creates a clone and it'll run this clone will run this code underneath the first step is I want to make clones come from on the right side and the left side to make it um, a more interesting more fun game because if they all come from one side it's it'll be too uh, too easy so when I start as clone um, I'm going to create a variable for this sprite only called direction and I'm going to set the direction to a random number between 0 and 1 what this means is every time a clone gets created they have their own direction variable and it will be either a 0 which I'm gonna make the left side and or a 1 so every time they're created they are assigned either a 0 which will be the left side and or a 1 and since there are two paths they can take we will need an if else statement and we will say if the direction equals one so if the creepers direction is one um, we're gonna go let's do well actually it makes it more sense to say zero if it's zero we're gonna start them on the left side uh, and of course 
they must show. So I think I'll put a show block there. I forgot that one. That's probably better. Um, go to the left side, which is minus 240. And then let's see what position we'll put them in. Uh, I think that's going to be minus 100. Um, will they show up? Yep, that's good. Good enough. Uh, he shows up. And then I want to point to the right, which is 90, point in direction 90. And then lastly, um, I'm going to need the creeper to move. I'm going to use a custom block for this, just because I know that I'm going to need it twice. And I don't want to have to make this uh, code block way longer than it needs to. So right after it points the direction we want to, I'll make it move. Now I'll define that later. I'll add some code here later on what this will actually be doing. Um, but for now, I'll move on to creepers who spawn on the right side. So if it's not a zero, it's a one, which will be the right side. And the X will be a 240, which is the right side of the screen. And then it'll point to the left. And now I can watch this and what we should see a creeper on the left and the right. And then they kind of stack on each other, uh, which is perfect. Now we just need to make them move in a way uh, that creepers move in Minecraft. So in Minecraft, a creeper will follow you. And if it gets close, it will blink and then uh, explode. And if you're too close, then in this game, we're going to have you lose. So how far do we want them to move? I'm going to make this random uh, by using repeat, pick random, and I will be choosing the numbers uh, 1 to 48, because I know it's 480 pixels wide. And if they start on the edge, the maximum they can move is 480, right? Um, and I'll make the move 10 steps. So 10 times 48 is 480. Then I know the creeper moves either between this spot or this one when they get created. So that's how far they can get. Uh, they can basically get anywhere on the screen. Next, after they make their movement, random amount of movements, uh, we will start blinking. And I'm going to do that with uh, setting the brightness. So instead of color effect, I'll set brightness to 100. And then I'll use some weight blocks to uh, put some delays in here. I like to do 0 0.2 seconds, it should be pretty quick. But um, and then I I'm sorry, then I duplicated this one, right click duplicate, and I'll change it to zero. And then I will do um, double that again. So it'll blink, brightness will go up to 100, which will look white, and then back to normal, back up to 100, back to white, and then an explosion should occur. So to create an explosion, we know that the second costume here for the creeper is explosion, we can switch it to costume explosion. Um, I guess one thing I missed here is we want to make sure the creeper always starts off as their normal costume. So I'm going to come back to the beginning here and switch that costume to uh, costume one. That's just in case something crazy happens. Um, okay, and that should switch to the explosion. And now when the explosion occurs, we need it to stay there for a little bit and then go away. Um, and I'm gonna do that with a repeat five. So for five frames of the game, uh, the explosion will be there we're going to make it kind of disappear, uh, dissipate or disappear uh, using change ghost effect by, let's go with 10. That should make it uh, get somewhat transparent. And while this is occurring, while this uh, explosion is sort of disappearing, and it's gonna be very quick. Let's take a look here. Um, so they, it's see how it uh, looks bright and then it, yeah, it kind of fades away. Um, while that's occurring, if you touch the explosion, you're gonna lose the game. 
So within here, we need an if statement. It says if touching Steve, if it touches Steve, we're going to broadcast game over. Um, I want to broadcast game over just because uh, you may want to add your own game over screens. And this will be an easy way to do that. Uh, broadcast a message called game over. And now this creeper is completed. The only thing I have to do now is decide what happens when game over occurs. And for Steve, when I received when I receive game over, we're going to just launch Steve. Because <laughs> I think that'll be fun. Uh, we're going to say, Steve, you're going to go ahead and we're going to say, um, control, stop other scripts in this sprite. So it just disables all the other code except for what's going on here. Uh, pick random, we need to say point and direction. Where is that? Pick random, uh, zero to 360, that's a full range. And then repeat 10, move 50, that'll be fast. And then the game will just end uh, with a stop all. So let's see how that works. Um, so basically all I did there was point him in a random direction if he gets if the game over occurs and then he'll move 50 steps 10 times very quickly and the game will stop. So let's take a look. All right, you can move left and right to avoid and then oh no, I forgot one thing. <laughs> I got annihilated. I forgot one thing. Uh, the explosions stay there forever, right? Um, so the last step actually here is delete this clone. So the explosion needs to actually get taken away completely. Okay. Hey, everyone makes mistakes. <laughs> okay. So that's not good. So what I need to fix there is also uh, Steve, his direction needs to be reset at the beginning. So I kind of messed it up a couple times. That's okay. Uh, just make sure that we reset Steve every time. All right, this is great. This is actually challenging. You jump on their heads too and bounce off of them. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so it worked pretty well. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, go ahead and you know, you can check out digitaladventures.com. We have a lot of student projects. You can check out on our featured page, uh, check out some more of the videos, Let's Build videos, and uh, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time.